Welcome back to my channel, my name is Marco, and this is going to be another edition of My Bookish Life. I really enjoy doing these type of videos, I think they work really well, and I am glad that I picked a title that allowed me some freedom of not being consistent, like, you know, the weekend reads or the Friday reads, or my weekly reading things, kind of feel like, oh, I've got to do it every week or at a certain time and with this I can just have it semi-regular and still be able to produce content that I am enjoy making. It's been a few weeks since I've done one of these and I want to go through some of the books that I've read since my last one. Women in Translation Month is coming up in August and for some reason I seem to be doing a very bro lit type reading lately so these are all male authors and that's a bit weird but I guess a week or two of only reading big male authors kind of it's not too bad I'll be doing a month of women authors and I just wanted to get a lot of these off my TBR some of these are library books and stuff like that so I needed to get to them sooner and that way I've got them cleared and I can dedicate all of August to reading women. And I'm super excited for Women in Translation Month. I can't wait. I'm not really a fan of readathons, so this book Tubafon or Reading Rush or whatever the fuck it's called didn't interest me. There was a 48 in 24 hour thing recently. All those things don't really interest me much. I like Women in Translation Month because it's just simple. It's like this month we're just going to read Women in Translation. There are other things like that, like Nonfiction November, where you go, we'll just read Nonfiction for a month. That I like. I like that type of thing. If it's a topic I'm interested in, then I'll definitely do it. So Women in Translation is my favourite. This has been going on since. 2014 I believe and I recently did a podcast episode with Bibli Bio who is the creator and does a lot of great work to promote women in translation so I will link the episode in the description because I'm very happy to be able to talk to her about this project and what it means why it's important and everything like that so definitely check that out uh, huge fan of all the stuff she does and she doesn't get enough recognition i won't try and pronounce her name because every time i tried to pronounce her name she corrected me and said not quite and she said it was okay to to pronounce it the way people have been pronouncing it but i do try to get pronunciations right even though i fail so many times and unfortunately reading a lot of translations means I fail at like pronunciations a lot because I have to try and work out how to pronounce these people's names. But having said that, let's just get into the books I've read recently. The first book that I want to talk about is The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato, and this is translated by Margaret Sayer Pendant. And this, amazing. If you have not read this book, definitely go out and read it. It's about 200 pages and it is beautiful. It's an existential novel, and I don't really want to say too much about the plot because I don't think that's interesting to tell people exactly what's going to happen, to give them an idea. I think if you like existentialism, check this out. If you want to read some classic Argentinian writing, check this out. If you want to read something that reads like a teenager's diary you <laughs> read this it's very angsty and it's beautiful i love angst and i love reading about angst i don't necessarily want to feel it but i love reading about it so this is one of the best books i've read this year it's a book i need to buy a paperback copy of because it's going to be something i want to read over and over again and unfortunately i read it on kindle and i did highlight a lot of passages in the book and that's showing up on my Goodreads if you want to follow me. But what I love about it is just the writing, the angst, the existentialism. It's just beautiful to read. Next, I want to talk about Revenge of a Translator by Bryce 
Matthew Sutt, and this is translated from the French by Emma Ramadan. And this is a very niche type book. This is a book maybe not everyone will want to read, but definitely a book that I loved. It's told entirely from the translator's perspective, and you can see, like, it's the footnotes. It's told, the whole book is written in footnotes, so it's a little star indicating, oh, this is where in the book, and then it's got the footnotes. And the whole book is just footnotes of the translator talking about this book that he's translating. The book he's translating is called Translator's Revenge, and he's kind of gone rogue. Like, the first chapter he's talking about how, oh, I'm in control, this is my spot, these footnotes are where I get to have my say. And then it goes on, like, chapter two is like, you know what, I'm just going to start trimming the fat. I'm just going to get rid of all this useless information, all that padding. And then chapter three is like, you know what, I'm just going to expand upon some stuff. I'm just going to add some flavour, make it better. This is the type of book you can get. It's a very postmodern, very niche type book, as I said. And a lot of people compare it to Vladimir Nabokov's Pale Fire, and I definitely can see that. It's definitely like experimental, like House of Leaves, but not so all over the place with the writing because it's just the footnotes. This is where everything's taking place. But like Pale Fire, it's like a critique on the art of translation, critiquing literature, critiquing this whole idea we have about books in translation and there's kind of fears that play in the back of our minds, like, is the translator just removing stuff from the book? Like, one famous example of someone that did that was Constant Garnett, who wrote, translated a lot of Russian novel. And if it got a little too saucy or a little too sexy, she would just cut that out of the Russian translations because she didn't want to write that. And so you play some things like that and plays on this as translating have the control to add or remove or change the meaning and definitely a book I enjoyed. Not going to be one for everyone, but I had a lot of fun reading it. Going from a good books, I'm going to talk about Condom Noughts by Yoss and this is translated by David Fryer and I hated this book. This is a Cuban science fiction novel and I wanted to read it because Joss is a uh, interesting looking dude and he looks all that also I was hoping to check his stuff out and because I love Soviet literature I was curious to see how Cuban literature played out but this kind of didn't work for me it's a very space opera type thing like aliens and all that and none of that really interests me I don't like hard sci-fi I like to experience the philosophical deal with some ideas and this was basically we're just going to write a book about having sex with aliens and the humor of, of it all is very much like an Adam Sandler movie so it very lowbrow humor stuff that I enjoy so this didn't work for me Probably a book that people would love and find fun and entertaining, but not really deep. I mean, the idea of having sex ambassadors to sleep with alien races to establish non-aggression pacts and stuff, this has been going on since the medieval times, except, you know, they called it marriage. So the idea, an interesting one, but didn't really work for me. Then I reread. In the Miso Soup by Ru Mirakami, who is probably a more interesting Mirakami to read. And this one's translated from the Japanese by Ralph McCarter. And this is a book that I'm planning to talk a little bit about in the future podcast episode with Rachel Louise Akers. And so I just wanted to reread it and familiarize myself with it. And 
I'm not going to go too much into Dear Child because I'm going to save that for the podcast. But what I loved about this book is the character Frank, the way he's written, he's both a ignorant tourist from America in Japan and also completely terrifying. And the way he's able to get that balance is just perfect. It's just amazing how he can have this idea of this ignorant tourist and still plant seeds of maybe this guy's a sociopath, maybe he's psychotic. And I just love that about the book. So if you're not read in the room, Muso Soup and want to read something really dark and gritty about the Japanese red light district, then this is a book you need to check out. I also reread Roadside Picnic, and this is by Akad and Boris Trzaski, and this is translated by Olina Bomeshenko. And this is another one similar to In the Muso Soup, which is going to be a future podcast episode. And I think this is a great book, great Soviet science fiction, if you've not read it. I need to read more from the Sugarsky brothers, and I think I need to check out more Soviet science fiction. But this is definitely one that is a good starting place. This inspired the Russian classic film Stalkers, and they wrote the screenplay for Stalkers as well. And then they also wrote the film novelization of Stalkers. So these brothers have a very smart business sense to cash in on a book three times for getting paid for the first book, getting paid for the script and getting paid for the novelization. Brilliant. Those are the books that I've read recently and I am still working my way through to 666 which I'm at part four now, and it is rough going. It is very full on with the imagery of sexual violence, and it's going to be really tough. I don't know if I'll get it finished before August. I'll probably need a break after reading book four, but I am looking forward to finishing that book. And it is a book that I am enjoying. Sexual violence is hard to read, but what's happening throughout the rest of the book definitely makes up for it and it's not one that I'm going to quit. I think Roberto Bellario is an amazing author and I want to read so much more of his novels. The other book I'm reading is Mac and His Problems by Enrique Val Matas and this is translated by Margaret Jill Costa and Sophie Hughes. Thank you penguin random house for hiding the translator in the copyright page assholes i am really enjoying this this is basically a novel that follows this 60 year old man named mac and he's lost his job and he doesn't really have much skills so he's not sure what he's going to do with the rest of his life so he just starts writing about literature and just starts writing about his day and he's got lots of knowledge. He's basically writing a book blog almost and just talking about his life and talking about literature. And that's pretty much the premise of a book. It's definitely something that I enjoy reading. Not going to be for everyone, but I'm having a fun time reading it. Obviously, a six-year-old man's going to talk about his first world problems. But if you want to read a Spanish book about old men and their first world problems, then this one's probably a good one to start with, And I think the reason why I picked it up is because he had that knowledge of literature. So, like, I can read a lot of books about men and their problems, but I love it when they talk about literature. If you could incorporate other books into your books, then I'm probably more likely to read it. So they're the books that I have read recently and the books that I I'm currently reading. August is coming up really soon, so I'm going to try and do a lot more in August to promote Women in Translation. I don't think I'll do a TBR because I'm not really good at planning my reading. I just have a stack of books that I really want to read, all by women, and I'll just pick out whatever I feel like reading, and I'll do more of these videos, hopefully, to talk about that. 
I'm not sure what else to do to help promote women in translation. I just think everyone should get involved. It doesn't have to be for a full month. I think there might be a readathon for Women in Translation Month sometime at the end of August. So if you could probably just dedicate your time there. But feel free to leave me a comment below and I love to talk to you anyone about literature. I'm obsessed with literature, obviously, and always wanted to talk to people about it. All my links to social media and everything are in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.